Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this stunning 3D web page using Spline and Framer. So let's get into it. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this simple 3D web page with this 3D animated characters. And when we click on the screen, it will switch into a different scene with different colors and different text in the background. And the layout should be fully responsive like this. So let's get started. So here we are in Spline and I am creating a new project. So the first thing we need to do is a 3D character that we can animate. So in order to do that, we need to go to this platform called Adobe Mixamos. So you can find a lot of free 3D character models and also a lot of animation presets that you can apply to this model and create a lot of cool character animation. So you can try it by just select any of these character and you can also upload your own characters. So let's try it with a model that I bought from CG Traders. I think it's going to be perfect for this. So FBX format is going to be ideal for this. So let's select this one and give it a few seconds to process. And then it's going to show you this model here. And from here, you can start um, the rigging process, which is really simple. So we just need to drag these dots to the right position as indicated here and click next. So after processing, it's going to give you the free model ready for animating. So all you have to do is just select any of these presets. So I'm going to search for some hip hop dancing animation. So let's try with this one. And here we go. We have this really cool and smooth animation. And then I can click on this button to download the animation as a FBX file. So now back to Spline, I'm going to click here to import the FBX file that we just downloaded. So let's select this one and then select any of these FBX files. So I have three here. So let's select the first one. And bam, we have the 3D models being loaded to Spline. And if you see on the right panels, there's a start event already set up here. And down here we have this animation tab and when you click on it, it will play the animation like this. So this start event will make sure that whenever you start a scene, the animation will automatically play. And you can also add another animation to this model by just select any of these happy acts. So we can have like a stack of different animations so you can select. Alright, so next step, let's make this guy look a little bit prettier by adding some material to him. Uh, so let's go to the left panel and then break all of these group down so you can see that there's a lot of layers that indicate different part of the 3d model so you can select any of these layers to adjust uh, materials uh, so you can see that spline have been updating a lot of really cool material presets so you can just select right from these so for example if i wanted to create some skin material i can go to this subsurface gathering category uh, from here, there's a bunch of different presets that you can select. So let's just select this one and adjust the color to match the skin tone that you're looking for. And apply the material to the rest of the 3D model. So I've been covered a lot of these material tips and tricks in my channel. So you can check out some of the video I put in the description to uh, learn more about that. So after finishing the material, this is what we got. So next, let's click on this empty area to open the scene setting. And from here, we can change the color of the background to something more vivid. So let's go with this purple here. And then I'm going to create a rectangle right here. And then just make it bigger and move it right below the 3D model. So we can have this as a uh, platform. And I want it to be an infinite platform. So uh, let's create a gradient layers and with this layers let's select radio and let's adjust the colors of this gradient to match up with the background colors and adjust the inner color to be a little bit brighter like this so the screen is looking good but it's a little bit empty so i'm going to add some text element into it so let's click here to create a text so you can type in any words here. So let's go with something like swag. Uh, that's the only hip hop word I know. And make it uh, a lot bigger. And then let's uh, select a more interesting typeface like this. 
and adjust the color to be uh, a little bit brighter so now let's transform it into 3d by just adjusting this instructions to maximum and now we have something like this so you can adjust the light uh, around to see what's worked better and then we have something like this so you can make the scene even better by clicking again on the empty space to open the scene setting and from here you can turn on this ambient shadow down here so you can see that it gives the whole scene much more depth by adding some shadow between these objects and the next thing I want to do is to create the camera so let's uh, create a new camera here and with this camera too I'm going to switch it to perspective so we can have uh, something like this but the angle is a little bit too wide so I can adjust this FOV here to uh, be a little bit more like a 50 or 80 millimeters lens so yeah I think uh, 15 for FOVs uh, is uh, looking good now you can click on this play button to preview this scene so yeah it's looking pretty cool alright so next step I want to duplicate this scene and apply different color palettes and also a different text to it but instead of duplicate the whole thing all I have to do is to go to the scene panel here and open this drop down UI and you can see scene 1 here so let's right click and select duplicate so now we have scene 2 with the exact setup so this scene 2 will be completely independent from the scene 1 so whatever changes you make here will stay here and more importantly let's replace this motion with a different one so let's select this one and now you see there are two motions so I'm going to remove the uh, the other one uh, so we only have one here and go to event to make sure that it's loading the right motion and bam he's instantly switched to another dance move so if you're feeling lazy to find the right colors you can uh, go to the scene setting and turn on this hue effect so from here you can just quickly change the whole scene colors and hopefully you can find something interesting like this one all right so now we have scene one and scene two so i will demonstrate how to create an interaction to toggle between these two scenes so first thing i'm going to create a cube and we're going to use this cube as a click area so let's make it uh, big like this and obviously we don't want to see it so let's just uh, turn off the casting and receive shadow and also uh, reduce the opacity by zero so now we have an invisible object here so uh, let's rename it as hit area and now let's go to the right panels and create an event for this cube so let's select event here and let's select the event type is mouse down which means uh, mouse click and for the action i'm going to go down here and select scene transition and if you click here you can see that the target will be seen too and i wanted to add a little bit transition by select fading in and duration should be really quick so let's uh, set at 0.1 so now let's preview all right so we start at scene one and then i click it's go to scene two and next let's copy this hit area object and paste it to scene 2 and from here you can change this target to scene 3 which we are going to create next so let's duplicate scene 2 to scene 3 and now you apply exactly the same process changing the colors uh, changing the text all right so after connecting all of these three scenes this is what we got a infinite loop of three different scenes interaction Alright, so we got the 3D is in a good spot. So let's, uh, I'm going to show you how to export it properly so we can embed it to Framer. So let's click on export. And here you can see the link that we're going to use to embed to Framer. And I don't want to show logo, so turn off the logos. And for the loadings, let's select this um, spinner animation and i think we're good so let's go to the place settings tab and from here uh, make sure to turn off this uh, all of these orbit and pan and zoom and sharp orbits because we want it to be fixed and down here i think we're good so just need to click on this update uh, url buttons and then we're good so now we're ready to move to framers and embed this to the web page 
all right so here we are in framers and you can see that i have a very simple design set up here so now i'm going to insert the embed component to this page by just go to uh, insert tab here and search for the embed component and then just drag it to the canvas and then let's adjust the sizing a little bit so i want it to be 100 percent of the width and the height of the canvas like this and then align it properly by just using these tools and then i want it to be responsive so let's uh, click on this constraint to make sure that it's we adapt to the screen size and then let's scroll down to this embed section down here and you can see that there's a import that you can just paste the link from splice to uh, this component so let's go back to splice and copy this uh, public url and just simply paste here and bam now we have the splice scene integrated to the web page so uh, let's move this embed component down under all of the other layers and now we can click on this play button to preview it so yeah you can see that it's working like magic here so everything's looking really nice uh, maybe you can adjust the color to be a little bit uh, darker but overall i think it's working pretty well and you can click here to publish the page so make sure to click update and click here to open the full preview Voila, so uh, it's looking even better with full screen. Um, so yeah, everything's working very smoothly. So yeah, this is the end of my tutorial today. So I hope you find this one helpful and I'll see you in the next one.